Hello, everyone, and welcome to another AITS Tech Talk webinar. My name is Carla Girdi, and I will be your host for today. In today's webinar, we will go through the geospatial model in the GI size with my colleague, Janine Kuta, who will take us through its features, architecture, and after, we'll dive into the technical demo. Before we start, let me just remind you to type any questions you have during the session in the question area, and we will answer them at the end of the session. Now let's get started. Hi, Janine. Hi, Carla. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you guys for joining. Um, so uh, in, in this webinar, we will take a quick look on the features and architecture of this geospatial module from GI Size. Using the GI Size toolbox, we're gonna create an online and offline map providers, create and configure markers, layers, tooltips, and shapes. Finally, we're gonna integrate the geospatial module within InTouch for System Platform and OMI. Let's take a quick overview. GI Size for Wonderware provides a software architecture designed to enhance the visualization and navigation of spatial or geographical data in a GIS, which stands for Geographic Information System. It um, provides an interactive add-on uh, for Wonderware and InTouch standalone as well, using set of wizards and virtual controls to represent elements in a huge installation as spatial data. Some of the geospatial module features are, um, it allows faster uh, project development. Um, it uh, increases or it makes more efficient engineering with simplified and easy to use automated tasks. It is also, it extends the Aviva system platform compatibility. It is also here possible to use the standard uh, map providers such as Google, Bing, or even create your own maps or image providers based on uh, vector files, if you have any. Um, um, the, the GI size development tools are embedded in the Orchestra IDE within the GI size toolbox. We're gonna take a quick look later on when we have a demo on spe specifically on the GI size toolbox. But let's talk a little bit now about the architecture. The GI size basically um, creates its own repository. So which is uh, like a complete GI size system uh, consisting of a single logical name defined by the GI size database. So the database itself, it contains uh, all the collection of the, uh, the elements or the components of the GI size, which are map providers, layers, markers, shapes, and other configuration components. And as you can see in the picture, the Galaxy repository for the uh, system platform is linked to the Galaxy repository of the GI size. Let's take a look uh, on the different types of map providers that we have. So let's begin defining a map provider. A map provider is a geospatial database um, consisting of geospatial map images. And it can be in, particularly in the uh, geospatial module of GI size, it can be classified into three different types. We have the online, offline, and vectorial types of map providers. So we're gonna start defining the online um, map provider here. The online map provider, as it sounds like, it requires access to the internet to provide the mapping. For example, I think you're all familiar with Google Maps. You need an internet connection to be able to connect and get all those geospatial maps and, and data from the, uh, from the map server. Um, unlike the offline um, map provider, which behaves like a cached, 
uh, cached uh, online map provider. The purpose of those are to is to provide um, a map navigation in environments where there is no internet access. So here, what we do is that basically we store the data in our local machine in order to access them later on when we need them. Um, the final one is the vectorial type of, uh, of map provider, which is based on SVG vector images files. And the, the particular thing here is that they can be optionally um, uh, georeferenced, allowing the use of um, latitude and longitude uh, coordinates here. Um, the, now here we're going to talk about the different components of the um, the, the basic components of the geospatial module, which, which are layers, markers, and shapes. And I did not highlight here on tooltips because you're going to see later on that tooltips is part or integrated inside the marker object itself. So let's start with layers. Um, layer basically you're going to see later on that it's not really visible to you guys. It's more like a conceptually interpreted as a transparent level where markers and shapes are attached. So it is a holder for the markers and shapes. So what's a marker? A marker is like a pointer to a specific coordinate on the map that is represented by an image. Um, and this image can be created using paintbrush or, or any other painting tool that you, um, that you can use to generate that image. Shapes. Shapes, it is, it's a collection of uh, specific coordinates on the map and they are represented as a polyline if they are opened or a polygon if they are closed. So you have either, you can choose between two options, either it's a polyline or a polygon. Later on in the demo, you will see that you have, for example, a circular type of shape that you can configure. The final part here, which is the most interesting part, is that this geospatial module can be integrated um, with the supervisory, supervisory clients of the system platform, which are the InTouch for system platform and the, um, the, the OMI. But I want to uh, point something here is that it also can be integrated or uh, configured along with the InTouch standalone as well. So in order to integrate the, the geospatial data with the InTouch for System platform, you can import uh, uh, the dedicated objects that contains all the .NET controls, uh, embed them in a symbol, because you know the, the .NET client control can be embedded in a symbol. Um, you need to do some configuration on that .NET client control. And using this, of course, symbol editor, and then you are ready to go. You can just right, right away integrate that symbol in a window and then you can jump to runtime right away. Um, on the other hand, since the .NET client controls, they're not, you know, they cannot be integrated within the OMI application. You need designated apps to be imported and used, um, used in layouts and panes. For example, here, we're going to learn about the the wrapper, the GI size wrapper uh, app for specifically dedicated for OMI. Let's hop in to the demo here. So we're going to talk about four different things here. Going to create an online map provider using the ARC GIS online map provider. Going to create an offline map provider. Insert layers, markers, configure tooltips and shapes. Finally, we're going to integrate within the system platform and in touch for system platform and the operation management interface. All right, let's hop into the virtual machine here. All right, so sorry about that. Let me just open the full screen here. All right, now I'm ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to point out here is that when you install the, geo, the geospatial module, you will see that a toolbox here will be created for you. All right. So this uh, toolbox, it contains all the, the configuration options that you have for your 
geospatial uh, module here. For example, if you go, first of all, you should have a Galaxy repository. I'll take you that in a minute, but let me take, give you a quick look on the options that you have. For example, you have administration options. You can save your Galaxy repository. You can import it, export it, delete it, or right, duplicate it, rename it, all those, um, even configure secu security, for example. So you have all those options ready for you in the administration uh, operations here. Second, you, can, you have the map providers, create map providers, layers. You can even configure navigation. Here, I don't know if you're familiar, you guys, with the familiar with the idea of template and instances. Here you have, you can create templates for markers, temp instances for markers, for shapes as well. You can configure containers and you can even also um, integrate a different language for your runtime view, for example. And, and also security can be configured as well. Here, the runtime preview here, it helps the engineer for um, <clears throat> testing process, uh, testing uh, uh, procedures here before running into the actual field uh, uh, runtime there. All right, so before starting and with the demo, I want to highlight on something here is that in this demo particularly, the data of two cities are going to be represented on the map. So I have two cities, I want to represent their, them on the map. And these two cities, actually, they are represented in the IDE with two user-defined objects, all right? And those two user-defined objects, they have some attributes. So um, let me open one of those. I have configured two objects, one for Abu Dhabi and one for Dubai. They have several attributes in there. They have the status the energy in kilowatt hours, the, the CO2 emission, alarm severity, and the alarm count. So how to show uh, these data inside on the map provider? All right, so let's first start. The, the first thing to start with is creating your map provider or maybe using an already configured map provider. So here, when you open, go to map providers, go to the GI SAS toolbox, go to map providers, open the tile map providers. So for today, I'm going to use the tile map providers. If you open that, by default, you will see that there are already existing map providers for the geospatial module. All right, so it's either there or are, you can use the already configured map providers or you can create your own. Here in the demo, I'm gonna create two, I'm gonna create an online map provider using the ArcGIS. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And another one, which is an offline map provider. Let me start with the online map provider. So here I have already created a, an example for the ArcGIS map provider. If I click, choose it from the list and click on edit, you will see that the most important thing for the map the online map provider is to specify a URL. So I have already prepared the URL, URL coming from the sample server of the ArcGIS online uh, map, map service. So here it's already there. <clears throat> First of all, you have to enable that map provider. You can specify the order of your object in runtime. For example, here I've specified it to be 15. You can change the opacity, for example, to 56% here I want it to be. It's a free map provider. It's an online map provider, and you have the ability also to configure the type of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the coordinate system that you have, for example, geodetic or the Qatar National Grid. For this one, I'm going to use the geodetic system there. Here inside the custom process, you can uh, specify some properties about the, this particular uh, uh, map provider. For example, this particular uh, map provider, it has reverse coordinates. So what I did here inside the custom process, I did, um, I put reverse coordinates in order to indicate that the GI size uh, uh, is supplied by that online map provider using switched uh, or reversed types of coordinates, all right? Um, uh, what else to do here? Oh, I have a refresh period, which is a zero. So how 
since I'm online, I want to refresh this, this map provider every couple of seconds, for example, or here it's zero by default, you can enable layers for this map provider as well. All right. So this is this is the basic properties for the map, the, the online map providers. Uh, let me jump now before going to the runtime preview and show you that. Let me go to the offline map provider. So I, I'll select to buy offline, which I've already created. I'll click on edit. You will see that the most important part here is in, on the other hand, because you know, for online, you specify the URL here, you should special, specify a cache path, which is where you want to save the data of your map provider. And then you should select it to be an offline map provider. When you select an offline, you will it will take you automatically to specify the source. So here we have the source. It can be either an online map provider as acting as a source or an offline map provider acting as a source. So here I have chosen an online with a map Google, a Google map. So here you have a list that you can choose from or the existing map providers. And then you can select the zoom levels. Well, basically in the geospatial, geospatial module, you have a, a 24 different levels of zoom levels. The more you increase the zoom levels, the more data uh, you, you want to show. <clears throat> and the more time, of course, you need time to generate the cache and, and save it to your local machine. The second thing you should do is select the area. So here you should select the area on where you want to highlight or see the, those, you know, this particular focused area uh, of the map provider here. Then the most important part, which is the final one, is generate, click on generate cache and accept. This usually requires some time because you are saving it in your machine. So I'm going to jump right away to runtime to show you the results of those. All right. So in order to see runtime, I go to the runtime preview here, double click on that. Then it will take me to the runtime preview in seconds here. So you see that the runtime preview takes me to several things here. You can see the user defined. If I'm using, I'm using the, sorry, the, the default user as logged in user to the IDE here. Uh, you can see, for example, the, the button reload data in order to, if you did some configure, extra configuration, you want to reload the view, you can use that. You can see the layer, the layers, the containers, the navigation model, and you can do some configuration as well. And the configure, the coordinates to where you're highlighting. So now let, let us see here the map provider. It's by default the open street map. Let me go to Dubai offline you will see that it takes me right away to the zoomed area to where I want to zoom in. Excuse me. Now to the, the, the ArcGIS uh, uh, online example, usually this requires some seconds to load because you know, it's an online map provider. Just give it a few seconds to load. Mm-hmm few seconds I'll go get back to it later but let's just give it some time trying to zoom in and zoom out to see if it's there all right here we go so basically you can see here some parts of that online map provider which is already loading so yeah now it's fine so now you can see that it it has already loaded all right so that's it for the map providers part here let's jump into the layers. So the first thing after specifying where you want to put all the, the data, specifying the map provider, let's create the layer. So the, 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 the third part here is the layer. So in order to um, configure a layer, you need to, let me just take you to a layer I have already configured. Let me click on edit. You'll see that you need a name, the, the beautiful thing here is that a layer can be attached to an orchestra area. And the, the, the third thing you can do is specify the map provider you want that layer to belong to. For example, here I have specified the, the map, open street map. Uh, in this demo, I'm going to use basically the open street map to demonstrate everything. 
the the beautiful thing here is that i want to highlight on something here is that by default the markers are drawn with the same size um, as the image associated to them because you know i've already mentioned that the marker itself is an image <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> since um the markers are drawn with the same size by default sometimes it's unpractical when you zoom in and zoom out so we can configure uh, you have the option here to configure or enable a dynamic marker size by associating to each zoom level um, a relative size and percentage of the original size of the image used for the marker so as a result so when we zoom in or zoom out the image of course will change its size accordingly based on the zoom level same applies to shapes all right so here the marker size and the shape size can they both they can be uh, uh, dynamic um, using dynamic sizing there you can specify a hierarchy for your layers for example a, a parent layer coming deriving several layers and etc all right and one thing to note is the min zoom and the max zoom which is the most important part here is that you should note that um if the zoom layer is lower or higher than the zoom than the minimum or the maximum zoom then the layer will not be visible so this is important to note so uh, that's it for configuring the layer very easy and simple so what i did here just put the name put the alias alias is you can you, you don't have to put it if you want to specify the map provider and you're ready to go um one thing to note is that you have to enable the layer for the map provider as well so if you go back to the on street map provider since i'm using it if you click on edit the the layer the corresponding layer should be selected this is a very important note all right um so now that's it for the layer you're going to tell me okay can i see it in runtime now well basically since the layer is transparent for me I need to add now some elements to the layer. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to add markers to that layer. So the, first, the, the, the next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to configure markers. So in order to configure marker, you can either create directly a marker instance, connect it to an instance from the, net, from the model or from the IDE, or you can create a template which is better for you. You know, you can generalize your work by creating a template. So I have already created um, a marker for the, uh, for the cities, for example, the Dubai and Abu Dhabi cities. And in order to configure the marker, you have several properties. You can, the marker can have, which is an image, let me remind you, it's an image. Um, it can have an offset, it can have a rotation, it can have a text you're going to see that we're going to embed text here i have configured text to be as my alarm count as you remember i have an attribute inside the inside the city dubai object it has an alarm count so this is what you're going to see later <coughs> excuse me then you can specify the image so if you double click on that you can it will take you um right away Let me just double click on that okay so it will take you right away so you can choose which image you want i have chosen this uh, this image here you can specify um uh, the text color oh the image here disappeared let me go back and select it so here let me go and select the image i want from here all right now the image appeared again um so you can change the text color uh here i want a black you can change the the font text size all right and the most important thing is that this um this uh, template marker template can be attached to an orchestra template so here you can specify the name of the orchestra template that you want for example this is a very nice option but i'm not going to do that now second thing is uh, create the costume properties of the marker that we can link to the costume properties of objects so for example here, the alarm count here is, is referenced 
to, uh, to the alarm count, which is an attribute inside the orchestra instances. So here I'm using like a more than a relative reference here. So it's orchestra instance dot the alarm count, or you can even select a reference by using the Galaxy browser. Let me go to the instances. So for example, City Dubai, you can select whatever um, here attribute you want to use. All right, then you can create uh, uh, your animations. All right, so the animations, basically what I did here is that I did three things. The, I want the image of the marker to change whenever this status is changes. So whenever the status is equal, equal to one, I want it to have image one. Whenever the status is equal, equal to two, I want it to have image two. I'll show you that in a minute. And the alarm count also, what I want to show it as text. So if you click on edit, you will see that if I have uh, a condition, if the status is equal to equal to one, I want the property type of image to change accordingly to a red color. All right. Um, so here you can configure animations. Okay. And you can finally configure a tooltip. So here, if you uh, edit, if you go to edit tooltip, you can, whenever you hover over this image, it will take you a tooltip here. I did a tooltip to show you the energy and the CO2 uh, consumption or emission, sorry. Uh, so you can specify an image for the tooltip, an image color, and even you can have animations for this tooltip. So here, basically, I'm assigning two properties, the attribute one and the attribute two, to show me accordingly the energy and the CO2 levels. Here, I'm, going, I'm not going to save anything. So I'm going to jump right away to the runtime preview and go back and choose the open street map and go to the layers, enable the city layer, and you will see that here, the image will um, appear for the Dubai city. Ah, I almost forgot something. Um, um, before doing that or jumping to runtime, you have to create an instance because this is a template. So I want to create an instance for Dubai city in particular. So what I did is, is that if you go to instances markers, then I have created already a, 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 an instance for Dubai. And if I edit it, you can see that I should select a layer. So the two most important thing is select a layer. So this uh, instance is derived from the template I've already created. I should select a layer to, to which it belongs to, select the coordinates here, which is pointing to Dubai city. So, and the most important part to do, which is definitely the most important part to do, is link this one to the city underscore Dubai, which is the user defined object, which is acting as an instance. So this is very important to do. All right, so I'm not gonna save anything here, just jump directly right away in this view here. So if I enable that, you will see that the, the tooltip is showing and the, um, the, the, the marker is already there. You can do the same, you can create an instance for Abu Dhabi city as well, if you want to. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'm going to the object viewer to show you how these change accordingly. So if I go to the object viewer in here and specify, for example, the status, I want it to be two. So now what will happen is that the image will change to yellow because, because you know, I have already created an animation for that. If I change the, um, the alarm count there, it will also change inside the text here in the tooltip, uh, sorry, in the uh, image here. And as well, the tooltip, it will give me the corresponding values. For example, the energy here, oops, stuck, I'm sorry. Oh, here we go. Oh, this is the alarm count. Let me go back to the energy, double click on that. And then for example, put 3000, click apply, and go back again to see the tooltip. Let me point thing about the tooltip. You're gonna wonder, okay, the tooltip is not appearing quickly because you know, by default, the tooltip will appear five seconds 
deal with delay of five seconds, but you can configure that in as a parameters inside when you go to the InTouch for System platform and the OMI, it's a parameter that you can configure. So basically now I'm done with the configuring the, the, the layers, the marker template, the marker instance. Now it's time to configure the shape. So as I did for the, um, the, the, the markers, I have created a template in an instance. Now I want to create an, a template for the, mar the shape. So uh, the shape here, I have already created a, a, mar a template for the, for the shape. If you click on edit, I have filled it with a color, with a blue color, as it is of, it's solid. It is a polygon, so it's either you can be a polyline, a circle, or a polygon. I have made it a, a, a I don't want borders. Uh, the opacity uh, by default it's 50. Um, and um, I have already also made some animations. So what will happen here is that when the energy exceeds a certain limit, you will see that the shape will be of a different color. So what I did here is that I created an I created an animation for the energy attribute there. So if you click on edit, you will see that if the energy exceeds 5,000, you're gonna see that the color is red of that shape. So then after creating the template, you, go, you should create an instance for the shape. So here you go. I have created one for Dubai. Then in order to uh, finish this up, you should specify the layer. So I have already created a layer called energy, then select the coordinates. Here, when you select the coordinates, it will take you and you can draw the, the, the polygon. As you can see, I have four points uh, making up this polygon that I have just drawn later, uh, before, sorry. So here, let me show you what really happens. So in runtime, so now the energy basically, it's a 3000, so let me put it to be, let me see it, what's going on first. So what I'm gonna do is that enable the layer energy and then zoom in a little bit to see that here. All right, so you see that this shape appears as a, um, um, as a blue color, but in order to change it to red, the energy should exceed 5,000. So I'm going to put that 6,000 and now accordingly, the shape will change its color, all right? So now guys, we are done with shapes, markers, tool tips, um, all of that. Now let us integrate the geospatial module with the both the InTouch for System platform and the OMI. So in order to do that, we should import um, the object dedicated for that. So I have already created, um, before before jumping to that if you go to the graphic toolbox you have see, you will see that i have already um um here gi size content i have already uploaded or uh, imported some apps those apps there for the intouch omi apps or the dot net client controls which are used for the with the intouch for system platform so what we're going to do here is that you, we're going to create a symbol so here I have created a symbol and inside this symbol, I have configured or uh, I have placed uh, one dot .NET client control for the layer and one dot .NET. So this one is for the layer. The other one is for the control panel. We should configure that as well. So when in order to configure the main GI size dot .NET client control, it's important to specify Three things. You should specify the name of the repository, which is the GI size repository, which is the, the name of the repository already created, I'm working on. And you should have a SQL trusted connection is equal to true. Note that here it's very secure here. You can have security inside your SQL by specifying the password and you can have security by SQL, in other words. And the design time should be set to true. These are the three most important parameters that you should be careful on while you're working with the InTouch for System platform. The, th the second thing is that you should specify the GI size um, control for your layers. So here, 
and for the uh, control, GI size control name, it should be GI size control. Now you're ready to embed this symbol inside a window and then see it. So here by default, I have created an in-touch um, application here, and it has a, an already configured window that has uh, already also um, has this uh, uh, symbol integrated into. So we're going to right away click one time to show you how this appears for the InTouch for System platform. Just in a minute for the windows, the InTouch uh, HMI window to open. You see that here I have a GI size window. Uh, this GI size window holds the symbol I have already created. Now, if you click, all right, let me open that in quickly. And then um, uh, let me go to runtime. All right, here, runtime. Now, whenever runtime opens, you will see that you will have the same uh, image that you already have inside the runtime preview already that, that you've seen already. Let's have a quick look on that quickly. So now it's loading. All right, so here you have your layers and your map provider. So if you click on cities and energy, you will see that it's highlighting on uh, a Dubai city here. So now you will see that everything is working fine in the InTouch for system platform. Now let's hop in to the InTouch OMI. And as I said earlier, you need designated apps to do that. So what I did here is that I have already configured an app that contains all the configuration here. Let me close this one. I don't need uh, this Windows Maker. Let me just shut it down. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> all right, so close here. Uh, I want to open this one, the OMI uh, GI size application. Uh, and this one, it contains a layout. And let me go to edit that layout. Well, basically there are two things I did here is that I have uh, put the, uh, the the event manager inside the one of the panes because this should be usually running because it uh, specifies the properties. So if you go and edit the GIS spatial manager, you see that I have already configured some scripts that you know I need them for uh, configuring the 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 connection. Sorry, the the, the properties. And basically, you can also specify the, the security with the SQL um, uh, uh, server. So here, the second thing to do after configuring your manager is put down the layout, which is the geospatial wrapper. You will find that actually if you go to the toolbox and type, go to the GI size content, go to um, apps, go to InTouch OMI, you will see that you will have something called, let me scroll down, this one, the GI size geospatial wrapper. Here you should drag and drop this into side the pane for you to, to be ready to go. Let me click on preview, click OK to see things in OMI now. All right, this will require some time to load. <coughs> Okay, so now basically what you have here, this is the view here, but I want to go to my, uh, to the online open street map, then go to layers, select the layers I'm working on, and then zoom into Dubai, here, let me go to Dubai, and then you will see that everything is ready for you in OMI. So basically uh, that's it for this webinar, and thank you for watching. Thank you, Janine. It was an informative session. I hope all the attendees found it interesting and useful. Now, as mentioned earlier, we will wait a few seconds to receive the questions from our audience. Meanwhile, I would like to invite you to follow us on our social media platforms to stay up to date with our news and latest updates. I already shared with you the links in the chat box. Also, uh, I received many questions about uh, this webinar recording. We will share it with you later today, and you can find this webinar recording as well as all other webinar recordings on our YouTube channel.
So don't forget to visit us and subscribe. All right, uh, let me read the first question we received. Can we apply the plant model from the IDE to GI size automatically? Janine, can you help us with this question? Um, if I understood right, it means uh, how to integrate the plant model automatically. Well, yes, this is a very nice question. Well, we have a very beautiful um, uh, 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 command here in the administration. If you go to administration, you can integrate all the Galaxy objects to be integrated directly to the GI size toolbox. So if you go to administration, repository operations, click on integrate Galaxy object, you'll see that now it's preparing itself to import all those objects. It's like more than an integration wizard. You have some steps to do. For example, I want to integrate all of those next step, then it will just take you right away and you can do it. Yeah, it's doable actually. Carla, I hope this was informative for the guys. Great, perfect. All right, uh, Janine, we have another question. How can we consult the URL of online map providers? Uh, you mean how to configure those uh, map providers or how to get them, you mean? Yes. Uh, all right. Um, <clears throat> very good question. So actually, depending on the map provider itself, you can construct this uh, URL. But uh, I have a very good example, actually. Let me remember. Yeah. Um, OK, so I have uh, um, uh, an example for RGIS here. For example, for the first thing I did is that I visited the sample server online uh, and I got the main URL from the uh, WMS uh, feature. And then I uh, added some important parameters for the GI size, for example, the format, the image, the, 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 OSR, the, the SRS, uh, the, which is the coordinate reference system. I added the, the bounding box, which is the area defined by two longitude and two latitudes, the layers, the width, the height. I added all those up to the URL, as you see, at the end and then i added some wildcards in order to finish or fine tune the url and you'll see this is basically the url i have used uh, inside when i configured the map provider a, a map box for example if you're using map box or any other tool it has uh, ways to do it i mean it depending on the um uh, you, the map provider that you are using i hope i hope i answered the question okay thank you janine uh, let me check if we received uh, any other question uh, in case we missed any of uh, your questions uh, we will be answering them uh, to your email okay Okay, I think uh, that's it with the, with the questions. Uh, thank you all for attending and thank you Zanin so much for this uh, webinar.